Hey there, this is James Carberry, founder of Sweetfish Media and one of the co-hosts of this show. For the last year and a half, I've been working on my very first book. In the book, I share the three-part framework we've used as the foundation for our growth here at Sweetfish. Now, there are lots of companies that have raised a bunch of money and have grown insanely fast, and we featured a lot of them here on the show. We've decided to bootstrap our business, which usually equates to pretty slow growth. But using the strategy outlined in the book, we're on pace to be one of Inc.'s fastest growing companies in 2020. The book is called Content-Based Networking, How to Instantly Connect with Anyone You Want to Know. If you're a fan of audiobooks like me, you can find the book on Audible, or if you like physical books, you can also find it on Amazon. Just search content-based networking or James Carberry, C-A-R-B-A-R-Y in Audible or Amazon, and it should pop right up. All right, let's get into the show. Hey everybody, Logan with Sweetfish here. It's a new year and a new decade, and we're celebrating by rounding up the top 20 episodes as we look back on 2019. We'll be sharing them here throughout the month of January in our hashtag best of 2019 series. And coming in at number 12 is an episode that I got a lot of feedback on last year. Many people were really intrigued by what Sam Balter over at HubSpot shared around the SEO opportunity in podcasting right now. Welcome back to B2B Growth. This is another episode in our Why Podcast Work series. My name is Logan Lyles with Sweetfish Media. I'm joined today by Sam Balter. He is a Senior Marketing Manager Podcast at HubSpot. We'll get into why podcast is actually in his title. He's also the host of the Weird Work Podcast from HubSpot. Sam, how's it going today, man? It's going great. I'm so happy to be here. Awesome, man. Well, I would love for you to give folks a little bit of context. Obviously, anybody listening to this most likely knows of HubSpot, knows what you guys do. But give us a little bit of context on your background, what you and the team are up to at HubSpot. And then we're going to dive into some specific things. You wrote an article for Marketing Profs about you know a huge SEO opportunity potentially in the podcasting space based on some things Google is doing. But before we get into that, give us a little context, man. What are you guys up to these days? Yeah, so just for just for in case anybody hasn't heard of HubSpot, uh, we're a company that makes marketing, sales, and service software that helps companies grow. And uh, the show that I host is Weird Work. It's a podcast where I interview folks who kind of left the traditional nine to five jobs to pursue an unusual occupation. So for us. We've been doing podcasting at HubSpot for a few years now, and we've launched a couple shows. We have The Grow Show, we have Skill Up, we have Weird Work. And I've taken on this role of uh, marketing manager for podcast to kind of just grow our global audience of podcast listeners. So it's something that we are continuing to invest in. It's something that we see as a big channel that has a lot of room for growth. And it's kind of like, even though that podcasting has been a while, around for a while, it still feels like very early stage right now especially for companies. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are some big indicators with Spotify's acquisitions last year with the growth of the number of podcasts, but there is still a lot of greenfield opportunity. I think, you know, one of the things we talk about at Sweetfish a lot is, you know, when podcasting first came around, we weren't quite ready for it, right? And now there are just a lot of uh, social and technological factors that are playing into what I call the second wave of podcasting. Uh, before we jump into the audio and SEO, uh, topic for today, you know, something you touched on there, Sam, and how you guys have invested in podcasts and explored podcasts at HubSpot. And obviously, being a thought leader in the marketing space in B2B, I would love for you to share some of the things that you guys have thought about internally and other brands should be thinking about on why would you add podcasting to your mix? Because obviously, there's reason why you've moved into this role. You guys are dedicating resources to it. Give us a little bit of context there. And what was the, the thinking and the strategy for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of companies are looking at podcasts now. They're looking at starting podcasts. And I think... Part of the reason is just because more and more people find themselves consuming information that way. A lot of marketers are out there listening to podcasts and they think like, maybe this is a viable channel for me. For us, we look at it as like, podcast audience has also been growing, right? We're at a point where more than half of the United States has listened to a podcast. More than a third of the United States is monthly listeners. And we're also seeing that when you look at the demographics of that audience... 
for almost any business, it's a really great demographic slice. It's people who are young millennials who are well-educated, so they're more likely to have kind of higher paying jobs. They're more affluent, things like that. So it's this really good group of people that businesses are going to want to interact with. So that's one thing to keep in mind. It's just like the audience is good and people are consuming the content and generally marketers kind of flock to those two things like content engagement mark and a good market the other thing that is for us and especially as we've started to kind of expand out the number of shows we have we don't we used to just have the growth show which was very thought leadership very business interviews focused then we have scale up which is very how to weird work which is a little more mass appeal that podcast content is in itself really flexible right? Like you and I could have a podcast and this episode could be five minutes long. We could also release an episode next week that's a 45 minute podcast, right? It's hard to necessarily do that with a lot of other mediums. You know, you might have video, people don't want to watch a video that's like 45 minutes long. So that's really cool, the flexibility of the content. And the other thing that I think is really is important for marketers that a lot of marketers worry about is like, am I cannibalizing my other channels? And if I have people, if I'm pushing people to a podcast, is it going to be a more convoluted conversion process than having them go to a blog post? So maybe I should not ever do a a podcast because I want all my listeners to be on a blog. But the thing is, podcasts just aren't consumed in the same time and space as things like webinars and blog posts. So it's also an area where brands can look at it and they can be like, oh, this is a great opportunity. It's furthering our engagement with individuals. It's not being interrupted into some sort of time in their day and it fits in really well with their schedule. So basically kind of just as a quick summary, it's like great audience, flexible content, good, good time where it's not cannibalizing other channels. Yeah, you make a great point. I talk with folks all the time. I heard Gary Vee talk about, you know, the the trifecta, the triple threat of podcasting the other day. Uh, I was going to say on LinkedIn, but of course, Gary Vee, it was on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, yeah, everywhere. Um, everywhere. But he talked about that idea of passive consumption, you know, whether you're walking the dog or you're driving, you're not taking up time where that attention, you're taking them from a blog post or a video or a webinar that they would be attending, you're gaining market share of attention like Gary V talks about you know day trading attention that's what we want as marketers is attention and trust and so you're gaining kind of this greenfield area of attention that's not already being taken advantage of the other thing it made me think of is you know and this would be me getting on our soapbox here a little bit at sweetfish but you have a podcast it can feed those other content you know we have a 30 minute conversation that turns into a blog post that turns into a 200 word status update on LinkedIn it turns into a little thread on Twitter, all those sorts of things. So I could talk on that for a (laughs) while, but you summarized it really, really well, Sam. So let's dive into this topic that led you to write the article for Marketing Profs, basically framing audio as potentially one of the next biggest SEO opportunities for marketers. Tell us a little bit about what's going on there, what you guys see, and we'll dive into it. Yeah, totally. So I think like just stepping back a little bit, One of the things people have been noticing about podcasts for years is that there's this big issue with discovery, right? It's hard to actually find podcasts. And you see that as like people mostly recommend podcasts through word of mouth, or you tend to see a lot of people finding podcasts through things like a top 100 chart. And Google is in a really interesting position because Google has this you know, has this mission to basically catalog every single piece of information out there and make it searchable. So obviously you have this huge wealth of information in podcasting and that has a discoverability problem. So this is like ripe for Google to to take on. And one of the big things they said uh, last year is they've sort of mentioned, we want to double the number of of podcast listeners globally in the next few years. They've done things where they've started building more podcasts into their phones, into their software, into everything they have. And they've also mentioned that they're going to start surfacing more and more podcasts up in search results. And once somebody mentions... Google putting something into search results, like obviously marketers are going to take notice. So that's sort of where we're at now. We have the the big problem that they're trying to solve. And then the question is like, how is that going to kind of play out? Like how and what is that opportunity? So 
I think the important thing for us to think about is like, Google wants to get a bunch of people listening to podcasts. So with, that means they need to get podcast content in front of people more often. So the first thing they decided to do was transcribe all podcast content, right? All podcast content is already being transcribed by Google at this point. So now it's a question of how is that content going to get start getting surfaced up? And I think the best analog to look at would be how did YouTube videos move into search? And I don't know if I don't know if you remember like the sort of pathway that you saw. Like first there was a little video tab on Google. Then there was like you started seeing if you typed in, you know, maybe interview with Kim Kardashian or something like that, there would be all of a sudden it would pop up and you would see a video on top of your search results in a carousel. There's a really good reason to believe that this is how Google is going to move podcast results in. Because people might say, Google might say, oh, okay, you know, you want to have an interview with Kim Kardashian. It might surface up audio results as well as results that are related to videos or articles or things like that. So talk a little bit about the transcription piece that you mentioned, Sam, that Google's already transcribing podcasts. That is all of those that are live in their native directory, right? Google Podcasts, correct? So that's, mm -hmm. that's something you need to be thinking about if you have a podcast and you want to start leveraging this opportunity that your show should be live in that directory, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And Google has offered, they've also offered some really basics on on-page SEO so that, you know, if you embed your RSS player in there, there's some tagging you can do on your page to make sure that, you know, it says, this is a podcast page. We have podcast content. Basically, if you look up Google's best practices on it, it's a great thing to include on your site. It's just very basic sort of housekeeping. Today's growth story centers around Exactly, a SaaS company that helps enterprise companies with their incentive compensation. They'd worked with search marketing agencies in the past, but they'd had issues with transparency and ROI. They wanted to improve net new leads via their organic and paid search channels, so they reached out to Directive. Optimizing search engine market share for Exactly was the top priority. Directive did this by improving search engine visibility for target audiences at the bottom of the funnel. In order to generate qualified leads, they focused on value-driven content on relevant, winnable terms, landing page testing on PPC platforms, and a laser focus on third-party directory optimization, specifically Captera. Directive grew sales accepted lead volume by 100% increased Captera conversion volume by 336% and boosted pre-qualified clicks to Captera by 39%. If you're looking for results like this with your search engine marketing, there's a good chance Directive can help. Visit directiveconsulting.com and get a free customized proposal. All right, let's get back to the show. Nice. I love it. So where do you see some of the folks that are maybe not not podcasting yet, what is the opportunity for them with audio being added to search? Um, and, and how should they be thinking about it? You know, quantity, types of shows, what what is going to likely play into this the most? I mean, I think in your article you mentioned like the big winners are going to be folks that already have a ton of content. So if you're not doing audio content yet, just start because that volume there is kind of you know, maybe like the early days of you know when when HubSpot started putting out massive blog content, and then and the quantity you know was number one, and then it starts to become other things: the strategy, the quality, all those sorts of things. So, talk to us a little bit about there, because I think you know you being at HubSpot, there's some interesting correlations here of what you guys went through, you know, maybe ten years ago, and the shift in audio here, you know, much like you guys leveraged blogs when that was less of a crowded space. Yeah, totally. I mean, HubSpot has done an amazing job of creating content in uh, basically text content over the years. Like we've really thrived at that. And I think being an early mover and having a high production sort of method of creating a lot of blog posts and then going back and highly curating, like that has been a very, very effective strategy. For brands, I think it's... Or actually, I think it's also sort of important to think about blogs 
as one of the things that helped HubSpot's blogs do well is we understand how the search result and the blog end up getting to each other, right? We started writing blogs that were saying how to, because we know that's a term. We know that when two things are verse each other, that's a term. That's a what a thing we should write. Like even Brian Halligan has talked about sort of the very early blogging stuff that they would write. And they would be like, it was like business school class things. You know, it was like long-winded essays on like P&L and all of these other things. And it's like, that wasn't going to work for search. So I think one of the things to think about is like, yes, there's going to be this really nice early adma- mover advantage for, you know, people like Sweetfish, who have created an enormous amount of content that's really easily crawlable um, and that has like really catchy headlines and titles and stuff like that that are going to align super well to search results. So the people that are going to do well in the beginning are definitely going to be people who have all of this stuff already. But I think to your question, more like you're just starting out, what should you do? Think about it. In my mind, it's like, Think about how search is going to change the format of podcasting. And in a lot of ways, like if you think about how podcast will be consumed in a search sense, it's probably going to be shorter episodes, right? If you look at the top 100 podcasts, the average episode length is about 45 minutes. But if you think about how people are going to find podcasts via search, I got a feeling that it's going to be a lot more shorter episodes because shorter episodes increase more ranking opportunities, which means you're going to show up more often. The other thing to think about is like how you structure all of your information. And the way... We talk about things a lot at HubSpot is the pillar and content cluster model where you have one sort of big central topic and then you have a bunch of clusters of topic uh, around that. So let's say this is a great example. Why podcast work series? This is a topic. This is definitely a central topic. And then you have several episodes around that topic that are all feeding into it, right? Like people who li- who might like this episode might go back and find another one. So I think when people are going into the future and they're thinking about, okay, I want to start a podcast, think about it in a like seasonal topic structure format. The show doesn't have to release on the feed that way, but like you want people to say like, this is a big topic we're going to cover. We want to have lots of little episodes with lots of titles that are that are tied to searches that we think people are going to have. And then we want all that content to be connected together in some way, either by a season or a theme or something along those lines. So you really want to think about the quantity of episodes you're making. Like you want to make a lot of episodes that are going to be short and they're going to have, and they're going to be connected to keywords that people are going to be searching for. But the thing you don't want to do is you don't want to just totally skimp on production and make kind of a crappy podcast. Like if you make a crappy podcast, people are not going to listen to it. They're not going to, you're not going to get downloads and people are not going to go to the next episode. And so one of the things to think about is like, how can I get a broad topic that's focused enough where I could build out a whole bunch of material and usefully answer people's questions and be very helpful And how can I make a show that after somebody listens to one episode, they want to listen to another? So I think those are the two things you need to balance, both answering the questions and appearing in those search results, as well as on the other side of things, actually making a decent show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Two things we are we are advocates of, you know, uh, <laughs> developing a show that's going to last a while that people want to listen to. We've always leaned into on B2B growth, short tactical episodes that we can get granular, you know, when we talk about ABM, we kind of try to get beyond the the why and like let's get down to the how of starting or taking to the next level or whatever. So the things you're saying are just things that we think about all the time and volume being important as well because you know you to leverage that searchability and also just leverage the serial nature of podcasting, right? If they're hungry for more and you don't have anything else in your feed for a month, it, it's tough to to build that audience over over time. As we wrap up here, Sam, uh, you mentioned something uh, on just 
you know, another thing that brands can be thinking about in how they how they leverage ad spots, things like that. I think that would be interesting, a little bit tangential to what we've been talking about here, but just something else as we close things out. Any other uh, words for uh, marketers, especially at B2B brands, thinking about podcasting with all of these things we've been talking about? Yeah, I think that... I talk to a lot of you know small to medium companies who are looking to start a podcast, and I think one of the things that people struggle with is how do I how do I make this like an asset, right? Like a valuable asset that's going to last a long time. And one of the big ways that I think you can is by thinking about it through search, through Google search, things like that. The other thing that I think about is ads. And like, we don't need ads on a branded podcast. Like it doesn't, you don't need them there, but they're useful in terms of breaking up an episode and they're useful to promote other services that the company might offer. So let's like kind of think about it as you have all of these listeners. How do you get all of these listeners to hear another thing, hear another product, hear another service? Well, you can where you can run an ad. Like there's ads in the front of this podcast promoting other things that you guys are doing, which is really good. And I think that is helpful for explaining to people who are thinking about starting a podcast why it's going to be valuable long term. Like a blog post isn't just a blog post. A blog post is also a place where you could put a call to action. The blog post is what gets somebody in. The call to action is what moves them down the funnel. In a branded show, a branded podcast can basically get somebody to engage with your brand in a new way. It can increase brand affinity and you can use the ad space in it to all of a sudden you know, promote a service, promote a free product, promote an event or something like that. And for me, when I step back and I look at the future and it's like, you see the advent of dynamic ad insertion, which if anybody's unfamiliar, dynamic ad insertion is where you take, basically you mark a moment in the podcast and then you say, this is an ad, and then you can swap out ads across all of your podcast. So if we imagine a show like B2B Grow, like if you guys had been doing, you know, tagging every single episode with an ad, you probably get, my guess would be like a large chunk of your downloads come from your back catalog. Imagine if one day you could just, you have an event coming up, it's in San Francisco, you you say one ad for that event, you click a button, and all of a sudden it's distributed across hundreds of episodes. It's in front of thousands and thousands of people. Now, all of a sudden, the podcast has gone from just this one-time content play to like a full machine. And I think that a lot of people who are looking at podcasts now are a little bit confused about how to get from I want to make a show to I want to make this part of my marketing strategy, right? And I think if people could see the value of podcast as evergreen content, if they could see it as a way to drive uh, people towards you know new things, new services, new products... It's going to have a lot more legs. It's going to go a lot further. Brands are going to get a lot more value out of it. So I'd say for people to look looking to start podcast, get out there, go start today, try and make some of your content on your own. It's not easy. It's going to be a struggle, but like you can you can do it and the opportunity is like really now and it's starting it's only going to get harder. That's that's the main thing I'd say. It's only going to get harder to get into this space. So it's better to invest in this kind of stuff in the beginning to take advantage of these kind of disproportionate rewards. I promise, guys, I did not tee Sam up uh, to do it that well, but he did it about as, as good as I could. Um, and, and you spoke to some of the things there, like back to the tactical examples of how we use our own podcast with a pre-roll ad spot for Sweetfish. Oftentimes, we're doing a call to action to subscribe to our email list. And so you're exactly right. The podcast is not just this one thing. It can feed other content. It can be part of your overall marketing machine and feed other things and and find this crossover. So I obviously totally agree with everything you're saying there, Sam. I love the way that you're breaking down, you know, some of the trends that you guys are seeing, explaining a little bit more about this, you know, looming thing coming with Google adding audio to search and and something that we should all be thinking about. You know, Gary V talks about, you know, he won on search and email because it wasn't crowded yet when he was coming up. You guys have obviously done a fantastic job of of text over the years at HubSpot. And so there are these moments in time where there's opportunity 
to to kind of seize this opportunity before it gets too crowded, before it gets even harder, as you put it. So I love what you're saying here, Sam, and I appreciate you making some time for me today, man. Uh, oh, if anybody you. listening to this would like to tune in to some of the HubSpot shows, uh, Weird Work, where can they stay connected with you, find some of the shows you're hosting, and uh, learn more about what you guys are up to on your team? Yeah. So I totally encourage everybody to come check out, listen to an episode of Weird Work. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen. Uh, Just type Weird Work. And if you want to connect with us on social media, it's just Weird Work or me. It's just uh, SB Balter at Twitter uh, or on Twitter. So yeah, that's that's where you can get me. Please ask me any questions you have about podcasts, any questions about starting things. Always happy to chat. Awesome. Thanks, man. Sam, this has been a fantastic conversation. I appreciate it, man. Ah, yeah, no, it's been great being on the show. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast, and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three.